spacing on things isn't the most work we sort of have to do is with this, we need to add this line that's going to be coming through on here and just add some spacing between our articles in general. Because if we come and take a look at them, we'll go to our small screen. Um, we are not spaced out properly. The spacing on things isn't very good. These are really stuck together. So we're going to add in that spacing that we need right now. Now, if we come and we look at the original design, we do have a lot more space around my date. This spacing actually looks pretty good, but we need a lot more space here and here with this line coming through. So let's start with just getting the space around my date and my three comments thing that's right there. Now, where would we do that? Um, we don't even need to go into our article to do that right now. We need the first part, since we're just looking at something in there, it is actually in the typography. So we can come back up and that is my article info. We don't have a selector for it. So I'm just going to copy that. We have the read more, read more. So we can come down here and put my article info. I want you to create the spacing for it with one line of CSS. And I want you to use the shorthand and add in that empty space. So if you weren't sure if it's margin or padding, again, people mix those up all the time, but I think you won't have confused it yet because we've been using almost exclusively margin up until now. Once we start doing more projects with padding, uh, you might start mixing them up a little bit. The spacing's pretty big on it. I want to make it even on the two sides. This is where it depends a little bit how you like to work, though. Uh, <laughs> and the reason I'm saying that is you could some... I tend to always like putting margin bottoms only, but I have exceptions. Um, because if you're only dealing with margin bottoms, it definitely makes your life a little bit easier. But sometimes it's nice to have a margin top um, just to simplify things. So I'm going to do that so I don't have to add a margin bottom on my image. And I'm just going to put this space and this space all on the date. It looks quite a bit bigger than my font size. So I'm going to start with like a 2.5 M and a zero. Maybe it's too big. I think it might be. But I tend to go bigger and then shrink down. And there's a really good reason that I do that. A lot of the time with margins, there's this thing that happens where you always end up putting them too small. And then you think, eh, it's not bad, but... Uh, maybe no just go bigger always go bigger than you think so start with a big number and slowly reduce until you're happy with it so it does look a little bit big so let's just drop that down to two and i think that looks much better and here's the fun part and that is going to be adding in the underline after our continue reading here so that line that goes all the way across the bottom i want you to think about where you do that how you do that how you pull it off how would you create the spacing that you need on the two sides of that line so what, you know, if you have to jump into the index, look at the markup a little bit, try and analyze it and see where you'd put that and how you think you might be able to pull that off. If you get a little bit stuck, that's fine. There's a bit of a trick to this one. It's not complicated, but it's not always something you'd think of when you're first starting off with this stuff. So I hope you had success with that and you figured it out. If not, though, really don't worry about it. Um, but what I'm going to do is in my layout, I'm going to come down and down and down and down. And we're going to create a new section here called articles because I am going into my article itself and I'm breaking that down a little bit now. So uh, for this, I want to take my article featured because this is the only one that has the underline on it and I'm going to add a border bottom to it. So that's going to create that line a lot like we did on our navigation actually. So border bottom and we can give it the color that we need. We'll give it one pixel and we'll make it a solid line. And let's go and take a look at how that looks. So there we go. We have the line that's actually showing up, but the spacing and everything is off. It's just not where exactly we need it to be. So how can we fix that? But we need two different things. The first one is I'm going to add padding, but I only want the padding on the bottom. And I'm going to do it with the shorthand just to illustrate why. So I'm going to do one M of padding and we'll go take a look. And you can see it's pushing everything inward. And you know what? Let's also give this a background color to make it super clear what's going on. So we're going to give this a pink background so we can look at what's happening. So we can see the size of my featured article is exactly the same. But when I added that padding, it pushed everything inside of that box a little bit. And if we make that a bigger number, it's going to push it even more. So we're pushing all inside. But you'll notice that the border is staying on the outside of my padding. So the border's all the way over here. So if this padding was only on the bottom instead of being on all these sides, it would just be creating empty space right here where we want it. So I can take this down to maybe back down to a one and I can also switch it over to padding bottom. Now, if you wanted to use the padding shorthand, it's perfectly fine there. Mention if you're only putting it on one side, I don't think personally there's anything wrong with using the padding bottom or padding right or that type of thing. It's when you're using two or three sides, it's a little bit faster to actually do it. 
with the shorthand. But if you use the shorthand for everything, it's kind of cool to be consistent. So I don't blame you. Um, so you can see it has created that space we want. My border is right there. Now I also want to increase this space a little bit and we can do that with my margin. So let's in margin bottom and I'm going to make it way too big for now just to illustrate that it is working. And so you can see this is my pink box. The padding was working inside. So that's why we have a gap right here. Then I have my border and then I have my margin after. So if you go way back to when we learned about the box model, it was always padding first, then a border, then a margin. We don't use borders terribly often. So sometimes we forget where they flow into the whole box model thing. Um, so if you didn't get this, it's completely fine. Now this is too big of a space. I'm gonna drop that down to a two. And of course, turn off the pink background. And you know what, I, I, I switched that, but I think a two and two uh, looks a little bit better just to make this spacing completely equal. I think it'll look better in the long run if we do that. So there we go. I think that is great for my featured article. Everything is good there. Now we're going to jump into styling this one here. And this is where we had that trick that I talked about. And actually, you know what, I think that would be better in its own video because it's a little bit weird and I want to be able to focus on it or find this video again if you need to reference it. So I'll see you in the next video where we'll take a look at how we can change the order of the content in there to match the design where the image is actually on top. And when we look at this one, the text.